With that being right. said, let's uh, let's roll on now and bring in the ringer. Bring him in. Right here. Bring in the lefty. We shall. We shall. I just texted him. So, uh, did we already say on this episode who would it, did we even say it in our intro of the episode? What I, we're doing? I think we've kept it a secret. I think we did. I don't. We didn't mean to do that. <laughs> um. So yeah, we have a huge fight coming up in boxing. It is not this weekend. It is next weekend, but it happens to be the same night as the UFC pay per view. So we're going to have a busy show. So we decided to do this one week early. We are bringing our boy Tommy O'Neill from mm Boxing on YouTube. MMM Boxing. If you do not know, search him up. He's been on our show plenty of times before for the big fights. Uh, and we're going to bring him on now to talk about the welterweight championship bout between Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Bud Crawford that it was, that is a huge friggin' deal in the boxing world. Uh, two undefeated fighters. Bud Crawford is 39-0. and Errol Spence is 28-0. They, for years, have been kind of pegged aside each other. We've been wanting fights to happen. Uh... We have not quite gotten there yet. Can you? And uh, we are here now. And now, perfect timing as I cue that up. Here is the man himself. What's up, bro? Not much. Can you hear me? You're yes, a can. little hot here. You're coming in a little hot. How? How the fuck is that, Mike? There you go. <laughs> What's up, bro? Not much, dude. Good to see you. Good to see you. I talk a lot with this guy over there, but Mike, it's good to see you, buddy, okay? Yeah, man. I I was dangerously close last time to car to just commandeering that show when you were gone. Somebody needs to ringlead these guys. <laughs> uh, well, welcome, man. Glad we could have you back on. When, when was the last time we had you on here? I can't even think. What was what was the last big fight that we would Not have? Not that long left? ago, when Mike was having his baby. What was the fight? When Why Mike was having his baby, and it was the uh, it was the Gervonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia fight. That's right. Oh, yeah. right. It was that one. Yes, yes, yes. I picked right. that one flawlessly. Right. Nailed that one. I picked that one flawlessly yeah. <laughs> down to not a winner who's the you favorite, did. but the round. But you the, did rounds, pick the rounds. You picked the fucking round. The rounds that that was plus money. That was magic, what you did. You did. Thank you, you did. my well, friend. Because what, I, want, I do want if, to say on this show, what, Mark? No, no, go, what do you want to say? Go ahead. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. I have picked correct on this show. Do pretty good on my own show. This show, I have picked correct every single time I've been on wow. here. Wow. Really down to – Really down to, and I've picked underdogs on this show. I've picked plus money stuff and all that flawless so far. I'm really down to put that to the test uh, again, like in not an easy way. On this well, episode. that's exactly yeah. what this I was a little bit gonna different say. Thing than... I was just going to say if we ever put you to the test, yeah. it is right now because this fight is very difficult to pick, and I'm very curious to hear which way you are going to go with this thing. Tommy, the floor is yours. Like cue the this fight up, mine. yeah. For our listeners and viewers, cue this fight up. Uh, who who is fighting? Why does it matter? And then ultimately, uh, end end with your uh, your pick. Okay, well, this fight is Terrence Bud Crawford, ranked pound for pound number one on almost everybody's list, versus Errol Spence Jr., who should be uh, two, uh, two maybe on on people's list, but is kind of no lower than pound for pound number three. And this fight is for all four belts in the welterweight division, 147 pounds. Uh, we have not seen not only a welterweight fight like this since the Four Kings genre in the, in the late 80s, uh, but I'm convinced that we have not seen uh, we've seen great unexpected fights, just like happened in MMA. I'm convinced we haven't seen a matchup that is this great and this pure in the sport of boxing since, yeah, maybe like on paper, on paper how it looks, uh, as far as that, since, since like the Four Kings era in the late wow. 80s. Uh, this wow. fight means wow. everything because He's the favorite. person who walks away from this fight, make zero mistake about it, uh, is pound for pound number one. 
wow. hands down. Wow. Hands down on everybody's list. He's pound for pound number one in the whole sport of boxing. Wow. Whoever wins this fight, uh, the, the, like I said, it's it's all four belts undisputed. Um, it, it, it means everything. The, the, this has been the greatest fight to make in boxing, obviously, for five to six years running. This fight was supposed to be put together uh, two or three other times and, and fell through. And we're really getting it. We, we're literally nine days away from it. This is just amazing. This is amazing. You look, you this is what boxing is about. And oh, I, and I, I love you guys. I love you guys. And I love MMA. Make no mistake about this. Dana White is watching this goddamn fight on his phone <laughs> while he's sitting there on the, at the promotion he's running. Yes, fair Probably. enough. And, and Dana loves boxing. Yeah. This is well known. Yeah. He loves boxing, but he only does that for the g really good ones. Yeah, he only good. does that for the really, really good ones. This is a and really he's, good. Uh, one. at, yeah, yeah. And so this is this is a, a a fantastic fight that fans have wanted for so long. Now, I do want to touch on something really quick. If the floor is mine, I, I before we get any further in the show, I want to touch on like the fact that. Uh, like, in general, boxing fans are actually really good. You could argue that the hardcore boxing fans are a little bit, like, more hardcore to stick through with certain things they watch and stuff they put up with than what MMA fans have to, even the hardcores like yourselves. Um, but the, the, the fans for this fight absolutely suck. All of you guys, right, that are out there that are that that you love, you fucking just love one of the fighters. That's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, there is not respect put on this fight as it really truly should be. I'm gonna give you my pick and all that stuff, but uh, there's not respect put on this fight like it should be because you just have Terrence Bud Crawford fans who are angry because definitely casual fans do not respond to him whatsoever. Mm. Uh, and then you have Errol Spence fans who uh, are, are high on Errol Spence and everybody hates on them because the guy trends a little bit with more casual fans can pull in more of an audience and the resume argument, which isn't an argument. Errol Spence has a better resume. That does not mean that he is uh, the better boxer, so to speak. Well, we're going to find that out right uh, with the fight. And this is just this is just your prime deal matchmaking. If you, uh, any of you out there, or Mark or Mike, think in your head about a better fight that you could possibly imagine making in all of boxing, I will, I will one hundred percent logically tell you why you're incorrect. This is the greatest fight that you can make in boxing right now in any weight class. Wow, <laughs> wow, yeah, wow. Wow. Big statement. You you don't That's realize crazy. what will happen with this fight. You have a guy that on paper look like and 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 as far as tape goes and film study and stuff looks better than than that than possibly than Errol Spence. He's a, a in Terrence Bud Crawford, deservingly pound for pound. But I, like I don't have him as my number one. But that's only because I consider both. Of the two aspects of the pound for pound, as, at least as far as boxing goes, which is definitely like your strength of schedule and who you have actually fought and defeated or even in losses look really good and outstanding against versus um, even if you have not, because this is sometimes the case like Terrence Bud Crawford faced like, you know, onslaught after onslaught of challenges, uh, how you look visibly on tape the things you're able to do terrence bunt crawford is a switch hitter he can hit very hard uh, and effectively does not necessarily look any worse in a southpaw position than he does in an orthodox position um and sometimes he can switch hit mid combination which is a different that's a whole different thing that uh people that are known like switch hitters that are talked about that's just because they can switch the stance for a while switch the stance back that is incredibly hard and that's the reason why even professional boxers not a lot of them that apply that uh, at all that because it's incredibly hard but also uh to be able to do that fluidly within combination while you're moving your feet switching the stance of which power hand you're throwing mid combination is 
seemingly impossible for people like me to to really grasp when you try it or ma many people um, and obviously even professional fighters who do not apply it for good reason because anybody it's easier to learn how to hit from your opposite stance what's incredibly difficult is being becoming orientated with like your defense from that stance so it's there's a reason why people don't really even try it terence bud crawford does that amazingly um so he looks like a guy that it's not shocking if he beats the the you know the greatest welterweight fighter. And then if he beats Errol Spence Jr., uh, to tell you the truth, he better move up or back down. I mean, probably up from there, but there's no one, there's no reason to have any other fights. And if Errol Spence Jr. beats him at this point, uh, boxing fans get frustrated when the fights aren't made, but the, the winner, like, this is it. This is it. So the guy that wins this fight uh, be bored and don't bother tuning in for uh, any other fights in the welterweight division uh, uh, against the winner of this. I mean, there's just would no other challenges that, there. Would, this is for both men. With you uh, making that point, of, with you making that point of how how high level this fight is, and in comparison to anyone else they could fight, and how there's not necessarily somewhere to go after this. Do you think there's any scenario where? they end up running this fight back or you think this is a one-time deal? That's actually a really good question. Cause I want to say, are you saying if I think there's any scenario, there's definitely like, there's definitely a big scenario. I mean, this fight has a rematch clause in place in it. Oh, okay. So they're definitely like liable to run. If this fight uh, by the way, I, I mean, I'll give you more odds and stuff as we're closing this up and my full pick uh, after the breakdown stuff here. But uh, this fight that everybody thinks their favorite fighter, whoever they may be out of these two, is just going to dominate the other one. It, the, the odds are a minus 215 for this fight to go the distance, and that's fair. I would even put those odds a little higher myself. So, like, th this fight's highly competitive. Uh, I, I guarantee you that no matter who wins it. And there's a rematch clause in place. So definite, all the money that will be made and the eyeballs on this fight uh, are, I mean, even this fight wouldn't have been made if it wasn't for that Tank Ryan fight and what people saw that that did. Well, it's not even for a belt. Nobody gives a shit about these other things. We want to see the best will fights. It, like, you would, like, them, like MMA fans do. Will it, will it make the money that Tank and Ryan made? Yeah, because Ryan Garcia is the biggest star out of all these guys. Yeah. I beg to differ. I think Tink Davis is a bigger star than him. You but, think so? Uh, okay, but same same point. We'll pay we'll, for the pay-per-view, but yeah. No, do you, so I, do you think uh, they touch their money? Man, I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. Listen, this is. I was excited for that fight. I ain't shitting on that fight just because of the way it turned out. A little bit more kind of one-sided and dominant. Um, but I was excited and I don't take that back. So I love that fight too. I'm not shitting on casual fans there, but hopefully people either way appreciate that being said that this has always been a better, oh, so much of a better fight. So I hope not, but, but you're probably right. It probably, well, it, it probably doesn't if that's what you were thinking. It probably doesn't. And that's just unfortunate, but that's kind of the way that things work, right? Like you guys just did a whole show on a, on a UFC card that's actually pretty brilliant uh, with a lot of like very underrated matchmaking uh, it, 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 as far as it goes. But the casual fan's not going to give a fuck about it sure. at all. So, right. you know, that being said, no, it's probably going to go. It's probably not going to do as well as that, but I hope it does. It does very well. It does very well. Um, but I forget what they did. Two million or something pay-per-view buys almost. Uh, right in Tank Ryan, I I don't know that it does that, you know. Gotcha. But yeah, they basically uh, this fight is like stylistically speaking, this is your dream fight. You have I, I'm gonna throw a fun fact out there for you real quick too to throw a wrench in the works of stats for this fight. Uh, Errol, Errol Spence Jr. 
you guys can fact check me on this real quick. I'd actually appreciate it because I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I think he's, they're both undefeated. I think he's 28 no, Errol Spence. Yep. Uh, Crawford, hands down, has way more. F- okay, he has, Crawford, hands down, has way more fights. I think he has 34. 39 and 0. 0. 39 and 0. 39, 39 and 0. Okay. So Terrence Bud Crawford, professionally, 39 and 0. Errol Spence Jr., uh, 11 less fights. Errol Spence Jr. has thrown just the jab, you know, from Southpaw. He's a Southpaw fighter. Just the jab alone. He's thrown more jabs than Terrence Bud Crawford has thrown punches uh, in his entire career. So Errol wow. Spence Jr. is like an, an, a, a, a cardio machine. Uh, he, he's, he's so active and, and pressure heavy that and he's shown already like the the Sean Porter fight especially the Dennis Ugas your Dennis Ugas that last fight he had he thought that his mouth like his mouthpiece came out he thought maybe it was his teeth and he kind of like paused for a second when he got hit and he thought the ref was stopping it he wasn't which is dumb uh, but he looked over to pick up, and he's looking behind him with his hands down. The ref didn't stop the fight, and Ugas clean cracks him with his hands down, not looking, and didn't drop him. You know, uh, the Sean Porter fight put him through the ringer. So he has shown that he is just like a ridiculous chin on top of every single fight that he has had is a cardio showcase a pressure style move forward, lots of jabs, conventional. There's nothing going to be changed up from the game plan here um, as far as his conventional style. He does nothing fancy, uh, Errol Spence Jr. He does everything exactly right. Hmm. He is a coach's wet dream. And not only that, he has... Uh, the 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 trainer of the year from last year as his coach Derek James, who also you know in his stable has the undisputed champ Jermel Charlo, his brother Jamal Charlo. They have the young up and comer Frank Martin in that camp. Recently took on Anthony Joshua in that camp. Um, he's yeah. trainer of the year, and this is a guy who literally believes that. You take what a fighter's good at, and I like this. I like this a lot. You take what a fighter's good at, and you drill that, and you drill that, and you find he believes in the precision of the sweet science, and you stick to it, and there's no reason ever, he believes, basically, to be switching up stances, switching up game plans. You should be better. If you're not faster, be stronger, fight on the inside. Do what the he believes do what stylistically makes sense for the fight and do not ever deter from the game plan, which is very uh, different from a lot of other good coaches who believe that you should have a plan B, a plan C, and all this thing. He believes uh, make your fighter so confident with the things he's good at. You're, you, he be, if he, believe, he won't send you out there if he doesn't believe you'll truly win the fight. And if he does send you out there, you do not deter from the game plan. You stick to the basics of boxing. This is Bud uh, Crawford's? First. No, no. This no, is Errol Spence, Spence Jr.'s coach. Okay. Yeah, this is Derek James, the trainer of the year. Um, as far as uh, Bud Crawford's coach, Bo Mack, who, you know, uh, is a, is a fa- I mean, has done fantastic with Crawford. But I, I'm not going to say that, like, I mean, he is a good coach, right? He is a good coach. I don't know how good he is because what I do see, like regardless if 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 Terrence wins the fight, he doesn't win the fight. I said it's going to be super competitive. He's these are the best guys. Um, I do see that a lot of the he can switch stance kind of naturally. I don't think that's as much trained. I think he's highly athletic and more athletic than Errol Spence Jr. So to speak, um, and I think that he can get away with a lot from that especially when you see that his level of competition that he's fought throughout his career has been good see this is the other part 
These Errol Spence Jr. fans just hate on his resume. I mean, the guy has moved up. He's a unified champion uh, at 140 before he moved up to 147. He unified every single bell. He beat Victor Postal before beating Victor Postal was a thing. So he does have good names. But after that, and at, as far as the welterweight division goes, uh, he has fought his best names, but he fought a very old Amir Khan, and that fight never should have been made. Never had that fight, should that fight. Amir Khan got just fucking hit in not even the stomach, but more the solar plexus, and said that he got hit in the balls and quit that fight. Uh, it's a shame. So that fight is just scratched. That name doesn't count, and I stand by that. He doesn't get to have, like, Amir Khan on there at that age and his condition. You don't You don't really get that. Uh, you have Sean Porter, and you have uh, you, you, you have Kel Brook on there for, for Terrence Bud Crawford, and both those fights, they weren't washed or anything like that, like some people would say. They're not, and those are full credit fights, and he stopped Sean Porter, but... Those are both his best other names, and those are both people that he got after Errol Spence Jr. beat them in their prime. Went to the UK to fight Kell Brook when Kell Brook was the champion, and that's how he got his first belt there um, in Kell Brook's backyard in his prime. Uh, fought Sean Porter years and years before the uh, the the. Terrence Crawford fight with him uh, where he was stopped and said before that fight and after and all sorts of, I was thinking about retiring, win or lose, which is never a great mindset to hear as well. Um, but Sean Porter and Errol Spence went to absolute war with each other. Uh, that was one of my favorite, maybe my favorite fight of that year that that happened. Um, and that was like a test of wills. And you know what? Because this is a YouTube show, we're going to lean to get your duck emojis out and all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like these, these hate, hating comments here. Uh, we're going to lean right into it. I pick uh, Errol Spence Jr. to win this fight as an underdog. Wow. How do you think he's going to yeah. do it? I think that he's going to do it by uh, unanimous decision and, and that the fight goes all the way. And I think that it's possible that he drops Bud in the late, late, late rounds, like 11 or 12, um, with the absolute pace that he has shown that he puts on in every fight without switching his style. He's basically, with what I said before that, about it, with his trainer and Derek James and how he fights, so flawlessly but simple, he doesn't change his game plan. So he's a guy that you count on knowing uh, what he's bringing to the table, which every time is relentless pressure, stay in your face. You're not going to land a lot on me clean, but if you do land real clean right on my chin, I ain't going down and just stay in your face the whole time um, and never deter. He says himself, um, which I loved. I got to I got to be honest. I try to I love this in the press conference. He says, uh you know, we're just going to do what we do, basically. Like, I'm going to, this is another man that I break his body, and after I break his body, then I break his will. And said, so just break him like a horse. And he said, have I not done that my whole career? He absolutely has shown exactly that. He's fought very good. You want to talk about fucking Errol Spence's resume? I mean, <laughs> he was the guy supposed to fight, get that Manny Pacquiao fight, which I would have bet my life savings on i know omar isn't here but omar always backs me up when i tell people bet the mortgage you know what i'm saying <laughs> bet the mortgage uh you you he, 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 errol spence is gonna deliver what he always delivers however terrence bud crawford and the way that he switches stances fights fancy does fancy things in there what actually can happen a lot of times is that kind of shit can get you in trouble against super, super solid, reliable, simple fighters. Hmm. That fancy shit a lot of times can get you in a lot of trouble against guys like that. Uh, and all that switching stances with a guy who is built to stay in front of your face and you're going to try to exchange with him in the pocket like that. That's not a good idea. Um, and 
Unfortunately, Terrence Bud Crawford, who is an, a fant who is an absolute fantastic fighter, who is deserving right now of being pound for pound. Now, I don't hate on that. Pound for pound number one, sure. Uh, he he has not fought anyone that's close to the caliber of uh, er Errol Spence Jr. He hasn't fought a soul that holds a candle to what Errol Spence Jr. will bring to this fight in, in quite literally like ev every single way. Experience more than Terrence Bud Crawford. Cardio, Terrence Bud Crawford has not needed to show so much. He's, he's good, he's athletic, all that. Uh, and and the, the fighting style of it. Terrence Bud Crawford's like a counter puncher. He's a counter puncher because he can move forward and be aggressive, but what he sleeps guys with is counter punching and stuff. So you would think, I want a guy going towards me. And he's good on his feet, switch and stand, he can back up. Now, everything that he has said about this fight and everything that came out in the, in the, in the media workouts uh, and, and, and everything, unless this is a complete deception in every way that's like clearly planned out. In, in, multi, in the way that he said everything he said and the way that he shows himself in media workouts, unless it's all uh, a very smart game plan to literally meant to distract from what they're actually going to do. He says he's going to stand there with him and, and slug it out like, like the old timers, which Harold Spence loves, you know, the, the, like, like we're Hagler Hearns in here. Like, let's, let's, let's go. Uh, and, that I I mean he better not do that. He better not speaking, do that. Speaking of slugging it out, hearing, hearing you say that, it, if someone does finish this fight, is it more likely to be Spence who can finish it in, in your eyes? That's what it's sounding like to me. But I'm I'm curious to hear you clarify that. No, no. Oh, other no. way. No, no, no. Uh, I think this fight goes to decision. But no, I know. I'm saying if, is to okay. be, if you told me ahead of time. No, I know. If you hold, if you told me ahead of time, I'm not going to tell you who wins, but I'll tell you that it was a stoppage. I think it's Terrence Buck Crawford. Wow, interesting scenario. Interesting, because he's, right, a, and, he's a very good counter puncher, and and I think that again, like what Terrence should do, is use that footwork, be smart, um, be a little more active earlier. Not notoriously like a fast starter, like Errol Spence's. Errol Spence's go from round one all the way. He literally doesn't look different in round 12. I swear to God, it. you guys, all you need to do is watch Errol Spence fights. That's all you need to do to see uh, the, all the proof of it. Doesn't look a bit different from round one to 12. Terrence is a little bit of a slow starter. Not real bad. But he's literally like in the Kell Brook after Errol Spence fought him or broke his orbital bone on both sides of his face and all that stuff. I mean, it, when, when Terrence fought him, he lost several of the early rounds to him. Uh, when Terrence fought Sean Porter, I did have Terrence up at the time of the stoppage. Some other people had Sean Porter up at the time of the stoppage. And I'll say it was close. You know, he gives rounds away. What Spence does is he doesn't, he do, again, you don't deter from the game. His, his game plan is, I'm going to be way more active th than you. If you use your head movement to get out of the way of my jabbing, which is just, I mean, that's the gates of everything he's got going on, the jab. From only this, you know, he's only just southpaw, won't probably switch it up at all, just a southpaw jab in his face all fight long. If you move your head enough, you're going to get tired, and then I'll just start. I'll, I, it'll be worse. Uh, if you're blocking on your guard, that doesn't stop me. Good for you. I look more active. I'm backing you up. And then if you hold that guard too close in to stop the jab, then I loop around from the side. I work everything off of the jab. That's what Errol Spence's motto is. So I just see a guy that is so sound of a fighter uh, who doesn't have holes in his game versus a guy who is very great, highly elite, highly explosive, athletic, but maybe too fancy and different and 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 uh, freestyle flowing 
of a fighting style uh, to fight to to fight a guy where you can't make mistakes at all, and to fight a guy where if you don't make the mistakes and you're doing well, uh, and you're doing all that fancy footwork and all that stuff that he honestly should do because he can't he shouldn't stand there with Spence because he will have a hell of a time putting Spence out. That if he does that, it's going to be way later. Like if he drops Spence, even round five, so we're good. We're money. He's just getting back up. It's so, and but Errol Spence never been dropped either. Terrence Bud Is Crawford, the size a factor for you? They call it a slip. Yeah, Terrence. Yeah, that's another thing. Ter- uh, 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 Errol Spence is huge. That guy's well, so doing keep, these open media workouts people. nine days away from this fight to make 147 pounds. If he's not like 165 goddamn pounds right now, I, I, I mean, I don't know what he. I, I would, I would bet money he's like 165 looking right now, nine days so out he's, from 147. He's that much pounds. bigger, huh? Wow. Because I, I know obviously Bud fought at a. a he's a lot bigger. Came up, you know, five. Five fights ago or so, but I see it's only two inches of height, and I see Bud actually even has a two inch reach advantage. But I keep hearing people say how how yeah, Spence yeah. is such a bigger man. It's it's frame wise. His frame is a lot. I mean, you just look at look, look like you guys run an MMA show. You guys have been looking at guys' backs. You know what I'm saying? You look <laughs> at the back, right? The back is huge. It's fucking enormous. His he's, he's his frame is a lot bigger. Dude, you know what I'm talking about when I say totally. that. Like, yeah, yeah, his, yeah. You, when you look at it, you, his frame is so much bigger uh, to where they get, they can't naturally walk around at the same weight, really. Bud has a crazy reach for his but, height. 74 inch I reach think at, it goes, at 5'8 is wild. Yeah. 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 That's how McGregor reach, am I right? Yeah, maybe. 74 inch something wingspan. Something like that. Yeah. It's it's the same kind of and he's a fast twitch muscle fiber kind of no, guy you know like no, you very fast twitch re, uh, athletic explosive and a clean counter puncher so what he should do is try not to yep, do right. so much fancy stance switching but 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 stay stay keeping trying to run Errol who will come forward into something that's what he should do. But I think that he actually stands there and tries to fight with them and prove a point. This fight has so much, like, hatred, uh, horrible, horrible fandom. You guys, get your duck emojis out, okay? This is it. <laughs> this is it. I'll lean right into it. I'm wearing an Errol Spence shirt. So, so everything I've said on this podcast so far, all I am is a fanboy. I have not boxed before or ran a YouTube boxing channel for three it's years. Okay. It's just this fanboy stuff. <laughs> it's all fanboy stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, they're both ducking each other. They're both scared. And one of them is going out round one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. All right. They, so people are out of their fucking minds. This one is the last, most competitive fight. One last question for you. I know you're on Spence. I'm trying to gauge how confidently you're on Spence. If they were to fight 10 times, or we could call it nine, so it's an odd number, do you think it's 5-4 Spence, or do you think he wins significantly more than that? Nah, it's, uh, it's like a 5-4, it's like a, a best okay. case scenario, a 6-3. Okay, so yeah. it's so it's that close. That's awesome. Yeah, it's not safe. It's not it's not safe. I'm really putting that record on the line for you guys right now. But you know what? There's no <laughs> value in betting on Terrence Crawford as far as gambling goes. Can I say that real quick? As far as just straight gambling yeah. stuff goes, which I talk about a lot on my show, there is no value in doing that because mark my damn words, dude. Either way, and I don't care like w- whatever the outcome, uh, dude. On paper, this is a fifty fifty fight. Wow. This is 100% what you call a 50-50 fight. And so if you see a guy that right now, I uh, believe Errol Spence is a plus 250 underdog, and it'll probably go up even more. And that is too wide. That is unfair. And there is your value in, as far as your gambling odds go. It, I, I mean, it is so, un, let's put it this way, super duper unsafe 
to bet oh, no. whatever uh oh, I, I what's bud guys. a minus 180 oh, okay. to bet 100 and 200 bucks to win a hundred dollars is super unsafe to do for bud crawford to win whether he does or not those odds aren't right so you gotta ride with the underdog plus listen i have for a long time when this fight has been just awaited always said always said that uh I've told you guys, aside from this fight, what I, I always say, I really value your strength of resume. You know, that is what I like in, in, in fighters. And when I make my picks a lot of times, um, of course, if you have a great resume and you're at the, but then you're going way down a hill, you're getting older, that's different. In general, what these guys are undefeated. Like Spence's resume is, that's something fans argue all the time. That's a, that's a, that's a void argument. That's not just, that's not an argument. It's not an argument. Just look up their box wrecks and tell me if you're a cash, if you're a hardcore fan, you fuck, listen, you, you could pick Bud Crawford to win. A lot of hardcore fans actually do. Zero problem with that. But if you're a hardcore fan, you fucking know not to make the argument that Terrence Crawford's resume is even close, never mind better, is even close to what Errol, Errol Spence's resume as far as name value goes. And if you're a casual fan, that it gets even simpler. Whose names do you recognize when you look up their box recs? Whose names do you recognize? Do you recognize fucking one name on Terrence Crawford's resume? One, no. You don't recognize, you don't even, like, people don't even fucking know who Victor Postal was. And I give the man all the credit in the world for beating Victor Postal at 140 pounds before he went downhill and all that stuff. I give him all the credit in the world. But people make these arguments, they don't even know who, like, Victor Postal was. They don't even know who he was. So it's, it's dumb arguments about this fight with the resumes. And, I, and, and that being said, like I said, I, I always say that I value resumes a lot. How much, how, ma how much experience do you have against these great fighters versus somebody who looks like the equivalent? Now, uh, I'm going to give you an MMA equivalent of like, a, of like a, um, Sean O'Malley, let's say. Now, that, that Peter Yan fight was showing, whether he had him winning or not, yeah. But looks like amazing looks super athletic and does a bunch of fancy stuff um, and looks like maybe he could smoke whoever. Like, you wouldn't be too surprised. But how the fuck do we know he only just got this one crazy step up? Especially before that Peter Yonfa, there's nothing. So that's kind of the comparison of your Terrence Bud Crawford, okay. a guy okay. who looks like he could murder anybody in the world, but who the fuck knows until we see it. Now we're going to see it on the 29th. Oh, wow. baby. Oh, baby. Always bringing the heat. Great stuff as always, Tommy. Thank you for dropping knowledge on us and on our MMA loving audience. I, was, I feel like I take, this is like a fucking master class every time you come on here, man. You really think that, Mike? Yes, I do. Dude, I you know so much you. your passion just comes through. I, I, I really, really appreciate you saying that, Mike. And you know what? I appreciate you guys and your show. It's absolutely blowing up. Can I plug myself before we get out Please of here? Please do. 100%. Tell us all the man, things where it. our listeners can also find you if they want to get into some boxing. So I've shouted your guys showed out a lot on unboxing because if you want MMA, that's where you go. But I'm going to tell you MMA fans, if you care at all about boxing, definitely check out my channel. It's unboxing, which is super easy. It's only three M's space boxing and it'll be the very first thing that comes up that you can subscribe to uh that has an everlast glove and a fork in it because we eat that shit up over here we love boxing <laughs> i give you good gambling picks i have many different uh you know shows like that i give you every single week my picks for the fight and my breakdowns just like i did here uh and i also have many different specials like greatest robberies in boxing unknown to casuals which i like a lot which puts casual fans one. in contact with like knowing about the the fighters that they should but they don't know about uh and yeah we have a lot of different kind of content on there uh it's a show that i've been running for three years and i definitely appreciate comments which have come in more and i love to interact with the fans in a respectful manner 
Do you know what I'm saying, you guys? Me yes. too, bro. You do. <laughs> awesome, yeah, Tommy's man. show is great. If you, if you, as he said, if awesome you care about stuff. boxing at all, absolutely go check it out because it is it is worth every second that you will spend over there. So yeah, throw the boy a sub, and he's the best guest we have on this yes. show. I am the best guest of all fucking time on this show, Mike. Am I not? You I mean, are, bro. It's not a. No one's holding the candle to me. Nobody. Dude. I'm the old, uh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Go check out their other guests, and then let me know what you think. You know, I'm, I'll be your favorite for sure. Well, let's uh, let's um, sign off, gentlemen. I gotta I gotta turn in because I, I I'm ring announcing an, an event tomorrow. Some pro Muay Thai for a uh, WBC North American title. Uh, can't wait for that one. And thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for hell yeah, yeah man. Uh, enjoy the fights this weekend. UFC Fight Night at, at uh, the O2 Arena in London. Tom Aspinall taking on Marcin Tybura. And uh, once again, maybe check- throw a little money on Touchy Feely. You think so? Uh, we Mark and we I both, both went the other uh, way. Yeah. Oh, I know, but I'm the firecracker, aren't I? I'm giving you dog picks on. Oh, there, I get man. why, man. We were talking well, about last it. Time he's got huge size on him. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the yeah. weight class. All right, folks. One he's got last. Something to prove. He's got something to prove too. Yeah, man. All right. One last. You feel it. One last time, guys. Go check out <laughs> mm, boxing on YouTube. And with that being said, we'll see you next week. <laughs>